During colonial times, many things changed in the Dagara people's lives. But matters such as family structure and the way people approach leadership remain much the same. Those who have gone to school in the cities are absolutely affected. They see things completely different. But most of the villages I know of still have the ways they used to with an almost medieval way of leadership. There isn't one chief who is in charge of everything, who gives directions that everybody has to follow. We still have a system where elders oversee the village without a sense of requiring wealth and power. Power, you see, is understood in the village as very dangerous if not used correctly. So everybody is very cautious about using any kind of power over others. Tribal people are starting to experience immense cultural pressures because of the exodus of rural youth to the cities and their exposure to mass media. Slowly but surely we are seeing with a pain a gradual reduction of the village population and the import of all these new ideas pertaining to romance and privacy. This is what happens when young people go to the city and then come back. In Africa, at least in the Dagara villages, buildings are mainly there for sleeping, for ritual space, and for storing food. But the actual life of the village is outside. You wouldn't have any particular place where you would go and change a diaper, for instance. It would happen right outside. You would bathe at the river and dress and groom yourself outside. You would go to the bathroom outside and use leaves from the nearby tree. Talk about cultural conflict for those who despise the old ways. In tribal life, one is forced to slow down, to experience the now, and commune with the earth and nature. Patience is a must. No one seems to understand the meaning of hurry up. In the village, we have what we refer to as elders. They are the ones who make the decisions of the village. When there is some pressing situation, the elders will get together and try to figure out what should be done. We do not have police or anything like that. We rely mainly on spirit and on the elders for justice. Among the elders, there's a council of ten that takes care of the rituals and other village concerns. They're a sort of committee within the larger group of elders. What you have to understand is that elders are not attracted to being part of this council because it involves a lot of work. You work for the whole community, and you are not like a person in power who decides everything. People can come any time of the day to get you for help. You can be sleeping, somebody will knock on your door, and then you have to work. You don't have a choice. This council is selected by all of those who have gone through the elder initiation. They are selected according to the Dagara understanding of the elemental forces that form the universe. We have five different elements, earth, water, mineral, fire, and nature. Each one of these elements is represented on the council by a woman and a man. The council is thus made up of five female and five male elders. The element earth is responsible for our groundedness, our sense of identity, and our ability to nurture and to support one another. Water is peace, focus, wisdom, and reconciliation. Mineral helps us to remember our purpose and gives us the means to communicate and to make sense out of what others are saying. Fire is about dreaming, keeping our connection to the self and to the ancestors, and keeping our visions alive. Nature helps us to be our true self, to go through major changes changes and life-threatening situations. It brings magic and laughter. When a member of the Council of Elders dies and they need, for example, a new water female, All the initiated elders gather to select a new water female for the council. Actually, you have to lobby a lot in order to find another elder because this is not a 9-to-5 job where you can let yourself be content with things and because of the delicate nature of the job. 
The family in Africa is always extended. You would never refer to your cousin as cousin because that would be an insult. So your cousins are your sisters and brothers. Your nieces are your children. Your uncles are your fathers. Your aunts are your mothers. Your sister's husband is your husband and your brother's wife is your wife. Children are also encouraged to call other people outside the family, mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers. In the village, extended families live in the same compound. The women sleep on one side of the house, the men on the other. The children are allowed to sleep wherever they feel like. They are not restricted until they reach adolescence. They can sleep with the women today, move to the men's quarters tomorrow, or sleep with their grandfather or grandmother, and so on. This concept of the big family is really helpful. I remember when I was a kid, I had the choice of a different father every day, depending on my mood. So if I wanted one of my uncles to be my father for the day, I would focus all my attention on that person and ignore the others. And the others wouldn't take it personally because they saw it as an opportunity for me to decide what I wanted. This also allows a large number number of people in the village to acknowledge the child and to see her or his spirit.